right, hello friends. It is me, your friendly neighborhood cozy representative, back again. I hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to be time traveling back in time to the heyday of Warp Tour, back to uh, specifically the neon pop punk wave back in, oh, 2008 or so. <laughs> so after the big, uh, you know, emo mainstream explosion happened around... 04, 05-ish, ushered in by bands like Taking Back Sunday, My Chemical Romance, Fall Out Boy, uh, and many others. Uh, you know, emo was all the rage, not only as a subculture, uh, but it was having its brief moment in the sun in the mainstream. Again, 05, 06, 07, 08. Subgenre-wise, and I know I've covered all this stuff a million times, but let's let's get our bearings, right? Subgenre-wise, there were many different sectors of emo going on around this time. You know, you had your pop punk bands, you had your post-hardcore bands, you had your metalcore, your pop rock, even your crunk. Uh, rappers, I guess, or, and even your bedroom pop, never shout, never type acoustic artists. There were all types of different flavors of this stuff, all gracing the pages of Alternative Press magazine, sweating through their straightened hair, making it all curly on the stages of Warp Tour all summer long, and amassing impressive numbers of friends on MySpace. Probably my personal favorite subsector of Warp Tour emo back in its 2000s heyday, the one which I grew up with, uh, which I was most passionate about and really defined my personality uh, back when I was, you know, in like middle school and even high school, uh, for me was the neon pop punk wave. That was like my shit. And to this day, it pretty much still is. <laughs> neon pop punk first started rearing its it's a uh, <laughs> colorful head into the scene with bands like, you know, Cartel and the All-American Rejects and Boys Like Girls around 05 and 06. And it really started exploding and reaching its peak around 07, 08, and 09 with bands like All Time Low, The Main, Mayday Parade, Every Avenue, The Somerset, and many others dominating Warp Tour around that time. Neon Pop Punk was defined by bands who were way more on the pop side of pop punk. Uh, you can even just call them pop rock bands as opposed to pop punk really you know sporting bright neon dinosaur clothing and playing bouncy catchy summery guitar pop with plenty of whoa o's and lyrics about dreaming of holding hands with the girl next door oh if only we could just hold hands with the <laughs> with Susie you know next door oh man And one of these bands who popped up seemingly out of nowhere in 2008 coming out on Fall Out Boy's Pete Wentz's record label was a band called Hey Monday, armed with a minor scene hit called Homecoming and a solid debut record. For a second it looked like they were going to totally blow up and just be the next big thing in the scene and maybe even have some mainstream success like a Fall Out Boy or a, a Paramore or a Panic. However, looking back, they seem to just kind of disappear almost as quick as they arrived and started blowing up. They were like a lightning strike, you know, blink and you miss them. So what happened to Hey Monday? How did they blow up so quickly in the scene? And why were they so short lived? Why did they never quite reach uh, the level of their peers, uh, you know, like, like Fall Out Boy or Panic or even like All Time Low or We The Kings, you know? Why, when they were in the exact right place at the exact right time doing the exact right music, did it not seem to work out in the long run for these spunky 2008 neon pop rockers. Hello friends, my name is, well, my name is Julian, and on this channel I am the Cozy Representative, and today we're going to pose the question, where did Hey Monday go wrong? It's a question I've been asking myself for years now, so let's, let's try to figure it out. Uh, before we get into things, though, a question. Have you checked out my Patreon? <laughs> if you like this channel and you feel passionately about it and you want to see me continue doing what I do, uh, consider hitting the description of this video and clicking the link to my Patreon to support even further. Thank you to all these people down below who already support on there. Uh, starting in the new year, uh, I'm going to be putting out weekly videos on my Patreon. Yes, weekly. Um, I have a series on there called Cozy's Basement, which is kind of a 
uh, takes on different forms. It's kind of a hodgepodge of different shit. Right now, um, the series is consisting of me looking through, uh, each episode is like a different CD or, or record or, or a piece of merch item from, uh, my collection of, of, uh, uh, CDs and records and merch that I've amassed throughout the years and kind of, kind of picking one out and going into detail a little bit. Each video is kind of like the videos on this channel, but much more unscripted and laid back. Um, and on the $10 tier on my channel, starting in the new year, I'm posting one episode a week and in the $5 tier, or I'm sorry, $10 tier, two fives, one video a week, $5 tier, one five, there's a video every other week. So Two a month. Does that make sense? I don't know. You can go down there and you can figure it out. If you want to support this further and if you want more of this, I don't know why anyone would want more of this, but if you <laughs> want to, it really goes a long way for me. Um, and thank you to these people down below. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for listening. Okay, anyways, onwards with where did Hey Monday go wrong? Let's find out. So the origins of our neon darlings Hey Monday begin in early 2008 in West Palm Beach, Florida. Party time, am I right? Uh, so some young scenesters named Cassidy Pope and Mike Gentile, who were like in uh, high school at the time, uh, they played in a local pop rock band called Blake believe it or not. Uh, there is only one song by the band Blake, which I've been able to find online. It's called Turn the Clock, and it sounds a little something like this. So this band Blake, uh, much like most high school bands, uh, high school local bands, they ended up breaking up as other kind of less committed members were going off to college and weren't as interested in pursuing touring or making music as a full-time career. But Cassidy Pope and Mike Gentile, however, were dead set on pursuing a band full-time. So in March of 2008, they started a new band, which was called Hey Monday, which consisted of various members of other Florida local bands, local players who Cassidy and Mike considered the cream of the crop in their local scene. Hey, I'm Jersey and I play bass in Hey Monday. Hey, I'm Alex and I play guitar. Hey, I'm Cassidy and I play my vocal chords. Hey, I'm Mike and I play guitar. Hey, I'm Elliot and I play drums. Here with Hey Monday. What's going on, guys? Hey! Hey! hey. 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 The band recorded some demos and things miraculously started happening for Hey Monday almost instantly when, believe it or not, Fall Out Boy's Pete Wentz heard the demos in <laughs> his uh, management office, the, manage the office of Crush Management, which who Fall Out Boy were on, uh, and immediately showed an interest. More than a feeling, Pete. Yeah, so Mike like, Sakurai, kind of shy. Boston. No, that's definitely not by Boston. Yes, it is. More than a feeling is by Boston. You know, Pete Wentz, he really started a lot of careers back in the 2000s with his label, Decadence Records, you know. He discovered and was the first to sign play Plenty of artists who got huge, uh, you know, some even in the mainstream, like Panic at the Disco, Gym Class Heroes, Cobra Starship, even the rapper Tyga <laughs> was signed on Pete Wentz's label, among many others. This is how much good music is on, out on record labels right now and is signed. This represents all the music that's not signed and all the artists out there who just need a chance and could be on a, a, a label and probably aren't getting a chance for another label. And you want to know what we're doing? Our plan is to go over there and get this, whatever, 99.7% of artists. 
you know, in the scene at the time, it was like once you had that Pete Wentz co-sign, you know, that Pete Wentz stamp of approval, you were already destined for, at the very least, emo scene stardom, you know, and uh, at the most, in some cases, chart-topping mainstream success. So not only did Pete Wentz show an interest in Hey Monday's demos in early 2008, but so did believe it or not, major label Columbia Records, <laughs> who heard the demos and were impressed by them as well. This led to Pete Wentz working out a deal with Columbia to sign Hey Monday to both Decadence and Columbia. So let's take a step back for a minute. What the hell? Hey Monday somehow landed themselves a major... <laughs> like two big record deals after just forming and just doing some demos before actually, you know, releasing any music or never having done any touring. How in the world does that happen? Well, I did some sleuthing. <laughs> I busted out this right here, April 2010 issue <laughs> of Alternative Press. Look, we got our boy Chris Drew on there. This is the AP tour lineup of that year. We got uh, the dude from The Cab. It's the guy from The Somerset and the Every Avenue Singer. And right there, we got Cassidy Pope, Hey Monday. I busted this thing out, and uh, I read the article about Hey Monday, and I found out a little bit more on the subject of how they got signed to such a big record deal so early. So let's uh, let's crack these pages open and uh, check it out, shall we? So it appears that in 2008, Cassidy Pope uh, went to something called the Atlantis Music Conference, which uh, a quick Google search tells me uh, that the Atlantis Music Conference is an annual event in Atlanta, uh, that aims to educate new artists about the industry through information sessions, give them exposure through talent showcases, and connect them with industry professionals through networking events. <laughs> Interesting. So, Ka so in 2006, a young high school Cassidy goes to this at age 15. Pretty crazy. Uh, arriving without any demos to hand out, she sang for Richard Rains from Drive Thru Records, who was impressed enough to sign her to a development deal. Uh, Pope worked hard, wrote songs, took her senior year of high school online, and waited for something to happen. Nothing ever did. When I went to Atlantis again with Mike, because it says that her and Mike Gentile went to the same uh, music conference two years later in 2008. Uh, when I went with Mike, I wasn't uh, expecting anything, Pope remembers. I didn't think it was possible. I was hoping for a miracle to get me out of that contract with Drive Thru. So I guess she was in limbo <laughs> with Drive Thru Records. Who Drive Thru was a really big deal. Uh, you know, they had a ton of uh, classic early 2000s like pop punk bands on their roster. Um, so she was in limbo with them. Was uh, you know I guess they weren't doing much for her from her perspective. Uh, but then there's a quote from Richard Rains, the owner of Drive Thru. He says we wound up doing a development deal in 2006. Um, in a development deal, we pay for demos, give guidance, and help while the artist develops their sound. If we like the songs, we pick up the option, which means we sign the band. If we don't, they can take the demos and bring them anywhere they want after we pass on the deal. This process usually takes a year. Cassidy was really impatient. We would ask her to work on her own sound and make some more demos. I would give her notes and advice, and the demos were getting much better. Obviously, she sat in Florida and got increasingly more impatient. The funny thing is, we did what we were supposed to. Help her get the demos sounding better and get them paid for. We gave her support, and then she's mad at us? <laughs> this guy, Richard Rains, is kind of salty at Cassidy. But I, I, I see Cassidy's perspective. She's, you know, a young... Uh, hungry, uh, high school kid waiting to get signed, I guess. I don't know, dude. <laughs> but regardless, yeah, I guess she had a, a develop, an artist development deal with drive Through, but then they passed on her. And yeah, it says, I guess she went back to this music conference in 2008. Uh, and then it says, eventually, Pope didn't just get the miracle she was looking for, she got two. An A&R rep for Columbia Records liked the demos, but wanted Pope to solidify the band lineup before signing. While she was putting the band together, another interested party contacted her, Pete Wentz. Uh, Wentz had serendipitously heard the demo playing on the stereo in the background at his management's office. He had been searching to sign a band fronted by a girl to give Decadence some label diversity and female empowerment. And he said, Cassidy Pope, she's my girl. So yeah, 
That's the gist of it. I feel like anytime that happens with bands, when they seem to just miraculously get signed to some big label right off the bat, it rarely is it this, uh, you know, just magical thing that happens. There's usually already some industry involvement that they had beforehand. So, you know, she didn't make it on the drive through. So that, yeah, anyways, so with a major record deal and a Pete Wentz co-sign in hand, Hey Monday were off to the races. And before even going on their first tour, I don't know if they had played like local shows at this point, but they definitely hadn't toured or released any music. Uh, they recorded their debut full-length record in the summer of 2008 uh, with producers Sam and Sluggo, who at the time were working with artists like Metro Station and We The Kings and Boys Like Girls, as well as Good Charlotte and K. Katy Perry. Those were some of the go-to guys for like neon bands. What's up, everybody? I play uh, drums in Hey Monday. My name is Elliot. We're about to leave for our tour with the Cab, so we're just hanging out, practicing, setting up. Come over with me to my gorgeous road case. I come every morning to get. Oh, oh hey, Jersey. What are you doing, dude? Uh, just hanging out, listening to our, our new album. Hold on tight. It's coming out October seventh. Did you know that? Yeah, I know, dude. But you got a room upstairs. What are you doing in my case? Well, it's comfy down here. What? What? Dude, come on, you gotta do your thing. Are you ready? Hold on, hold on tight. October 7th. I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just finishing watering the plants. How many shot off the water? On a serious note, we're Hey Monday. Check out our CD, Hold On Tight, in stores October 7th. So Hey Monday recorded with them, and after they finished recording their debut, they filmed a music video for the debut single off the album Homecoming in September of 2008. And after they filmed that first music video in September of 2008, before the record had come out, the band headed out on their first tour ever, a full national U.S. tour called the Why So Serious Tour, which was headlined by Decadence Records label mates The Cab, alongside fellow openers This Providence and A Rocket to the Moon, and the debut Hey Monday album, entitled Hold On Tight, was released on October 7th of 2008. Uh, and also in October, the band headed out on their second tour, opening up for The Academy Is and We The Kings on the Bill and Trav's Bogus Journey Tour alongside fellow opener Carolina Liar. Fun fact, I attended that tour. I went to the Boston date. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> So, Hey Monday's 2008 debut full-length record, Hold On Tight. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you guys. While I do see Hold On Tight as a solid debut and a good start for a new band, there's only like a handful of, of really good songs on this record. I don't think that the album as a whole is really all that great, uh, even in the context of the scene that they were in at the time. You know, it's a fun, summery, polished uh, caffeinated, catchy onslaught of solid 2008 neon pop rock. Because singer Cassidy Pope is a girl, the band got a lot of comparisons to Paramore at the time, uh, you know, because people always compare pop rock bands with a girl singing to Paramore. <laughs> uh, but I personally don't actually hear much Paramore in Hey Monday's sound on this record. I, th I think Hey Monday sounded a lot more like, I don't know, an all-time low kind of thing, or a We the Kings, or a Boys Like Girls, bands like that. Really just down the middle neon pop rock, you know? And while there are a few great songs on this record, uh, you know, I think in my opinion, easily the best song is actually the lead single on the album, Homecoming, uh, which was actually co-written with William Beckett from The Academy Is. Um, I think that's, I don't know, just a really fantastic song. The other single, How You Love Me Now, is a very catchy, solid pop rock track. And, you know, there's some other good ones on the album. I'm a fan of the opening track, Set Off, quite a bit. That's a cool one. Uh, Obvious is a cool song. And the song Candles definitely tugs at the heartstrings you know uh, candles that's like watching uh you know that song is like watching titanic you know got the tears streaming down your face on that one but overall 
to me, the album kind of suffers from a lot of the songs just sounding the same. It's kind of an album of like the same song over and over again. Uh, there really aren't enough truly standout tracks on it to me. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of paint by numbers a little bit. It's a very safe, like risk free, uh, very like major label sounding kind of album too, you know, very polished. Even in like the context of the emo slash pop punk warp tour, whatever scene at the time, uh, there's really nothing groundbreaking or innovative <laughs> or all that unique that can be found on Hey Monday's Hold On Tight. There's, there, you know, there's a handful of great songs, but there's nothing on here that, again, bands like All Time Low or Boys Like Girls or We The Kings weren't already doing a slightly more remarkable version of prior to 2008. You know what I mean? And, you know, I'm not trying to be like a hater or anything. That's just genuinely how I feel about the album. Uh, however, all that being said, you know, I don't think that Hey Monday's 2008 debut, Hold On Tight, is an album which is really asking you to take it all that seriously. You know, it's it's here for a fun, summery, pop rockin', neon good time. And for that purpose, it certainly does its job exceptionally well. Well, in my eyes, it may be a little bit of a bland album. It certainly is not at all by any means a bad album, and it was a really solid launching point for a pop rock band in 2008. And now, you know, 14 fucking years later or whatever, looking back, this album, if nothing else, is a really cool just relic of its time, you know? Anyways, the album did pretty well right off the bat in the scene, aided by the band's, you know, Pete Wentz co-sign and uh, the pretty big tours they got on right as the record came out. You know, the great lead single, Homecoming, became a very hype, like, warp Tour scene level hit at the time, and so did the other uh, song on it, uh, How You Love Me Now, was also pretty big. Hold On Tight reached number 11 on the U.S. Billboard Heat Seekers chart, which is a chart dedicated to new, up-and-coming, breaking artists, uh, and the record had reportedly sold 64,000 copies by October of 2009, which is no small feat. The record was definitely a success within the Warp Tour emo world, uh, but besides the music video for Homecoming appearing on MTV here and there, uh, the band wasn't, as far as I can tell, wasn't really tipping into like real mainstream success all that much off this album, at least not here in the States. Apparently, and I didn't know about this until researching for this video, but apparently the song Homecoming like totally blew up in Japan. <laughs> it was like a major hit there. It reached number 27 on the Japan Hot 100 chart, which is crazy. It also hit number 97 on the charts in Australia, which is cool too. I don't know. So yeah, Hey Monday, we're officially in the building, you know, off to a great start. A They were becoming a worldly success. Let's put it there. Uh, and if you look at the <laughs> if you look at the touring they did throughout 2009 in support of Hold On Tight, the band got some really great opportunities uh, within the scene and had a lot of scene level success. And from the outside looking in during this time, it really looked like Hey Monday were about to just fucking explode to that next level and become uh, you know the next giant emo pop rock band. Throughout 2009, the band hit the road on the following tours. Well, they started off the year uh, with a pretty kind of a smaller tour. Uh, they headed out opening for Fall Out Boy <laughs> on the Believers Never Die Tour Part Du, Part Du, Two in French, uh, <laughs> alongside uh, Cobra Starship, All Time Low, Metro Station, and 50 Cent on select dates. So, you know, humble beginnings for the year. <laughs> Uh, they went from that tour into the summer. They went on freaking their first headlining tour. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's back up a minute. So they've been on three tours. They they did the, the, the Cab Tour, the Academy Is Tour, the Fall Out Boy Tour. That's three tours, you know, only on their first record. And then in the summer, their, fir their fourth tour ever was a headlining tour. That's insane for a band. Um... But yeah, it was called the Let's Make a Mess Tour. Uh, opening was This Providence, The Friday Night Boys, Stereo Skyline, and The Bigger Lights. What a neon jamboree. This Providence should have been way bigger, by the way. I just want to say, like, the the, the self-titled This Providence record from, like, I don't know, 05 or 06, that album is so fucking good. Uh, you know, they were, you know, no offense to Hey Monday or any of these bands, but This Providence should have been on a way bigger level than, like, opening for Hey Monday by the time 2009 came around. They, sh they should have been on their own head. If I was, like, king of the scene, this Providence would have been, like, the fucking 
biggest band ever. Anyway, that's that's just me. Um just me being pretentious. Uh, and anyways, they, they went from their headlining tour into the fall on, you know, another pretty small tour, the Glamour Kills Tour, <laughs> headlined by All Time Low and We The Kings, uh, alongside the Friday Night Boys. Now, you guys just got off a huge tour with Metro Station and Fall Out Boy. What was that like? It's pretty crazy. It was uh, surreal. It was pretty much the biggest thing we've ever done. And, um... It was awesome. We made some really amazing friendships and we learned a ton on that tour from everyone. Okay. Now, you guys went from being an opening act to now a headlining tour. How do you guys think you managed to pull that off? I think it's just like our time to kind of test ourselves and see how far we've come because we've been touring since September. So, it, like, I think, I mean, it's definitely a quick transition, but we were ready for it and um, it's like a little test to see if. You know we can do things like this in the future okay now did you guys ever imagine you'd become this popular I was hoping uh, that we would get a uh, at least as popular <laughs> but it's still yeah. surreal like we played our first sold-out show last night yeah and I'm still kind of like in shock that it was actually sold out yeah the whole night out. he was like guys tonight was sold out and we're like, yeah <laughs> It's pretty insane, but he just he kept saying it over I, I've and over. I've been saying it all day today, too. I, I don't know. It's just crazy. It is. It's crazy. So, yeah, Hey Monday, we're fucking in the building. And then onwards into 2010, uh, they hopped on the AP tour, spring of 2010, with Never Shout Never headlining. The, oh, the, that's the what the my AP magazine was from. That was the lineup. Never Shout Never, the Somerset, Every Avenue in the Cab. Alongside Hey Monday, another fun fact, I attended that tour as well back in 2010. It was a real good time. Loved all those bands. Uh, and then after that tour, Hey Monday hit the Warp Tour in 2010. And uh, also a fun fact, she would sometimes do guest vocals uh, on stage with Attack Attack, which is pretty funny, you know, pretty different, different styles of bands there, but... You know, it was pretty cool seeing Cassidy uh, on stage with Attack Attack. While the band was touring on Hold On Tight on those, you know, the smaller... <laughs> <laughs> the small tours that they were on with Fall Out Boy and All Time Low. They began, as most bands do, writing and recording what was supposed to be their second full-length record, which was going to be called Beneath It All. Uh, but come summer of 2010, Cassidy Pope updated the blog on their website with some shocking news. Cassidy says... I have some news about our August 17th release. Instead of a full-length album, we will be releasing Beneath It All as an EP instead. And then early next year, we will release an album to follow it up. We were definitely bummed when we first found out, but on the bright side, we'll have a lot more music for you than originally planned. And we'll be on the road for a longer stretch to see all of you. I wish we had known that the full length would be coming a little later before telling everyone about it, but there's nothing we can do about it now. However, I'm pretty certain you guys are going to love it all. So I, <laughs> I don't know why exactly Beneath It All was shortened to an EP. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that major label interference probably had something to do with it, but the exact reasons, who knows? I don't know. Uh, based on the comment section uh, on that archived Cassidy Pope blog post, it appears as though a lot of their fans were pretty disappointed uh, that they weren't getting a full-length album uh, like they thought, uh, and it also kind of sounds like Cassidy herself was bummed about it too, so that's unfortunate. Um, <clears throat> also, leading up to Beneath It All, there was some lineup instability within Hey Monday. Who would want to leave Hey Monday at this time? Man, they're on all the biggest tours, blowing up. But yeah, a couple people left. Uh, in late 2009, their drummer Elliot left the band, citing creative differences. Uh, and after Warp Tour 2010, their bass player, Jersey, left the band as well. It's unfortunate. I think Jersey had, uh, he had, like, star power, man. That dude, that dude was, like, an icon. Like, I don't know much about that guy, but just that, that dude had the, had the look. He had the vibe. Man, I remember when he left Hey Monday, I was like, oh, that's a loss. And also their drummer, Elliot, 
uh, is like some industry guy now. I have to check. Uh, he's got his own Wikipedia page, which I'm about to pull up. Yeah, he's the only member besides Cassidy who has his own Wikipedia page. Elliot James is a British singer-songwriter. I didn't know he was British. I thought they were from Florida. Um, <laughs> British singer-songwriter, producer, recording artist, member of ACT, Extremely Bad Man, and drummer of rock band Hey Monday. He's the founder of some record label. He's... I don't even know. He does stuff with Neo, I guess. I don't know. I have no idea what this dude actually does, but he's involved He's involved in the industry enough to have his own Wikipedia page. And I don't know. There's a section for music career. There's a section for film career. There's a discography. I don't know, man. So that dude's made well for himself since leaving Hey Monday, even though I can't figure out exactly what he does. Uh, <laughs> Jack of all trades, if you will. Master of none. Who's to say? Um, <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's a pro. Anyways, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, Hey Monday. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, despite all of the success that Hey Monday were achieving on the Hold On Tight album cycle, the road was starting to come a little bit rocky leading up to their sophomore release. They got people leaving. They're bumming fans out by only putting out an EP. So this begs the question: Was the Beneath It All EP gonna totally make up for it? You know, was this gonna be, you know, a groundbreaking, uh, you know, big moment for Hey Monday? You know, was this EP just gonna musically just blow everybody away? You know, and make everyone forget that it was only an EP and not an album, and make the lineup changes seem like way less of a big deal? Was that gonna happen? Well, not really. <laughs> Beneath it all, the EP was released on August 17th of 2010 on Decadence and Columbia. Although the EP charted super well upon its initial release, it debuted on the Billboard 200 at number 25, which is a huge, you know, jump, first week jump from the first album, and uh, it also sold 14,000 copies first week. No small feat, again. Despite this, the EP ultimately ended up being kind of a disappointment from the band uh, as far as their fans were concerned you know musically the cp is like way more freaking mainstream sounding than their previous record you know they pretty much took out any and all of the pop punk elements from their sound entirely took it out in favor of you know a way more radio pop rock you know uh straight up pop and occasionally alt country leaning sound and if you remember i already see you know the first album i already felt like sounded like pretty major labely at the time anyway so they went like even more major labely which is not necessarily like a bad thing but you know fans weren't stoked <laughs> on hey monday doing that um Wish you were here. Personally, I don't think this EP is bad by any means. I think there's good songs on here, uh, but it definitely sounds like kind of an incomplete thought, you know? It sounds a little half-baked to me. Stylistically, it sounds like they were trying to go for like a 90s singer-songwriter slash Third Eye Blind kind of sound, but, uh, you know, they didn't really nail the big finish on that direction and ended up with songs that kind of sound like outtakes from like a Kelly Clarkson album or something. Arguably the best, or at least the catchiest song on the EP in my opinion is uh, I Don't Wanna Dance, big dancey radio sounding catchy pop rock song. Uh, this was released as a single but didn't really make much of a splash on the radio or MTV or anything. So, yeah, in a nutshell, in the grand scheme of things, this EP was kind of a letdown uh, for a lot of Hey Monday fans at the time. Didn't really do anything big for the band. It failed to push them to that next level. And uh, it was kind of unremarkable in the grand scheme of things. However, I will say, as I listen to this EP in prep for this video, there are some great, like, I would say overlooked songs on this thing, uh, such as Wonder Girl or Wish You Were Here. I do like a lot, but I also do understand why like Hey Monday fans at the time, like scene kids who were into their first album, listened to this and were like, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, 
disappointed by it. I don't know. Anyways, although fans were promised a full-length album in early 2011, uh, and, you know, the band did roll through 2011 with more big touring, like, for example, opening for All Time Low on the Dirty Work tour that year, uh, there was still no new music in sight. In fall of 2011, it was announced that Hey Monday had departed from both Columbia Records and Decadence, making them an independent band. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that uh, the big wait for the second album, again, was caused by like major label fuckery. I don't know what exactly, but um, you know, I I'm guessing label problems were getting in the way of them making a great next record. Uh, so you know, it was a good thing at the time that they were able to leave their labels and hopefully get the next album out sooner and on their own terms, breaking free of the diabolical clutches of the major label, you know? Uh, after this, they self-released a Christmas EP, interestingly enough, on December 6th of 2011, uh, which was their first new music in like a year and a half. You know, but at least it made it look like, you know, there was still gas in the tank for Hey Monday and more new music was coming. Better late than never, right? Well, just a couple weeks after the this Christmas EP came out, on December 16th of 2011, the band announced some more Shocking news. Drum roll. They were going on hiatus. <laughs> they weren't breaking up. They called it a hiatus. And here's a statement from uh, Mike, the guitar player, uh, him talking about them going on hiatus at the time. Here's what he had to say. Quote, hey guys, so I'm just going to fill you in on a few little tiddly bits. <laughs> Hey Monday is still a band. The band is not broken up, however, we are currently focusing on other aspects of our musical expression. As you all know, Cassidy is pursuing a solo endeavor. She has posted her info about it on her Facebook page, so if you would like to go scope that. In lieu of this downtime, I am pursuing new music, playing and writing with a new band. This will be my main focus. I'm extremely excited about this, and I'm looking forward to releasing information about my new band very soon. I'm working some things out. New bands don't just happen overnight. For what Alex, Pat, and Christopher are up to in the meantime, keep up with their Twitters and other social networking sites. Keep posted to my blog and blah, blah, blah. He basically just says, we're, we're all going to be in new projects soon, so take a look at our Twitters. And uh, yeah, he, you know, obviously he was adamant that, hey, Monday still exists. They're just taking some time off, going on hiatus. But fortunately, hey, Monday never came back. <laughs> and pretty much looking back, it was a breakup. They have played some reunion shows um, with not the complete original lineup, but with Cassidy and I think I think this guy Mike and one of the other guitar players. They've done, you know, some like emo night type stuff here and there, but they've never fully come back or or done any touring or any music, you know, after 2011. And um, the, you know, the most noteworthy uh, Hey Monday alumni. Uh, besides that, the drummer Elliot, who has a Wikipedia page, uh, Cassidy Pope, as most people know, went on that singing competition show, The Voice, in like 2013 and fucking won. She won the fucking thing, which is pretty crazy. And uh, since then, she became, you know, what looks like a pretty successful uh, country singer. You know, she's had uh, some country albums and you know, I'm not super in tune with the world of country, but it, it looks like she's uh, doing well for herself in that world. So that's like pretty cool. Good for her. You know, uh, I like Cassidy. She seems like a real cool, wholesome, nice person. So I'm glad she's had continued success. Um, so yeah, going back to the OG question of this video, where did Hey Monday go wrong? You know, I would say obviously the obvious thing is the major label interference, which caused them not to be able to have a solid second record come out in a timely fashion. Um, you know, obviously they haven't gone into full detail on like what the major label interference was or even that it was major label interference but that's just what i'm gonna guess because why would you shorten your second album to an ep when you don't really want to and why would the album that was promised not get not come out and get pushed back like you know for 98 
percent of bands, 98% of the time, that's because fucking the major label was up to something, breathing down their necks, trying to control their shit, which sucks. They obviously did break free from their label in late 2011, but that was like way too late. You know what I mean? I think they should have had, if they had like a solid, good, strong second record come out in 2010, you know, I think there would have been more gas in the tank for them and they could have kept going but you know because it was shortened to an ep and the ep didn't really do much people didn't really like it it just kind of fizzled out also i think the other thing uh that really stood in hey monday's way is in the context of like you know that world of you know not only neon pop punk but just the the whole you know mainstream emo explosion that happened uh you know in the mid to late 2000s 05 06 07 08 I think they kind of came too late in the game to really get much bigger than they were. You know what I mean? You know, they were kind of late to the party. They weren't the, the bands that really did um, achieve that like next level of success and became not only like the biggest names in the scene, but also tipped over into mainstream success. Because obviously it does kind of seem like Hey Monday were aiming for some major label success or, you know, success outside of the world of emo. The only bands who were really able to do that fully, like I'm looking at bands like Boys Like Girls or again, like All American Rejects or even like Cute Is What We Aim For had a big, you know, MTV hit. Those bands were all earlier in the game, like more 2005, 2006 was when those bands really hit because that was kind of back when the, the whole emo explosion thing was fresh and new and it wasn't it wasn't like played out yet, you know, by the time Hey Monday came around in late 08 through 2009, you know, it, that whole uh, mainstream, uh, you know, emo pop wave was really starting to like wind down at that point. So I think that they were a band who like, if they had, if they were earlier to the party and if their record was like a little bit better and if they made a strong second album, you know, they could have become like a, a big, you know, boys like girls or, um, you know, or like a Paramore or a Fall Out Boy or whatever. But it was just they were like too little too late. You know, they were too late in the game. Um, they had a few good songs, but they weren't that great. And, you know, they had the, the dreaded sophomore slump, which kind of took a lot of wind out of their sails. So that's my answer to the question of where did Hey Monday go wrong? And yeah, again, just to wrap this up, you know, looking back. While I did say that, like, their, their, you know, kind of their classic album, Hold On Tight, isn't, like, the best album all the way through, um, it's still, like, a cool, it's still a fun album for what it is, and, and I think what really makes that record special, like I said, is it's a relic of its time. It's an album that is so 2008, it only could have come out in 2008. And uh, if you're like me and you were in, you know, middle school in 2008 and you were going to see these bands live, it's a really fun, like, um, fun way to to kind of revisit something that was so in that era, you know. You know, I guess the only downside to that is it's I it's not really a timeless record, you know, cuz it's um, you know, but I think that that sometimes that doesn't matter. Not everything has to be timeless and you know, be like the greatest thing ever. Sometimes it can just be a cool artifact from the era it existed in. And that's how I view Hey Monday. So anyways, thank you guys for watching today's video. Um, it's been your man, the cozy representative. Again, check out the Patreon if you want, uh, you know, uh, videos from me every week or every other week, depending on the tier. I'm going to be going really, I'm going to be really prioritizing that this year. So check that out. Um, thank you guys for watching today's video. And uh, yeah. Hope you guys are doing well. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. See you next time, guys. Love you. It's your man, Julian, the Cozy Representative. Peace out. Bye-bye.